Hi, welcome to the West End Video Newsletter. Tonight, uh, we've been on the air for like 14 years now. I believe it was 1986 we started, and we've been doing this show for 14 years. We've been on in different towns, five or six different towns. In the beginning, we started in Somerville, and then we moved to uh, Somerville, Medford, then Boston, uh, then to Brookline, Malden, and uh, Stoneham. Uh, we're, we're, and we've, we've been doing the show for so long, uh, it's like has a history of its own. So tonight, uh, I have somebody with me who is not actually a West Ender, but who has become an honorary West Ender through the long years he's put in with us here at the West End Video Newsletter. Another life. We, we have <laughs> such, we have our director, Joe, what's your name again? <laughs> Joe Fortunato. Thank you. <laughs> Joe Fortunato, <laughs> who has been directing my show for quite a while now. And uh, we've gone through quite a few different people, uh, uh, different kinds of hosts and everything. Uh, but I thought it would be interesting just to see how sort of an evolution of how the show started. We started a long time ago. Uh, first show was with Sonny Lepresti and we had a reunion. And we did a reunion, uh, uh, a reunion show. Then the second show we had Al Lupo. We had such fun. Uh, I was the host for the first two shows, but then I had uh, hot problems, and Joe LaPiccolo came in after that. Uh, Joe left after about the 70th show. I took over again as host because my, my arteries were all right again. And uh, we've gone through, I don't know how many directors through the years. We started with Abigail Norman, mm -hmm. who lives in JP now, and she has a baby, and she's doing a whole host of other things. We've, uh, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. When I became a member right. of uh, some of community access television in 91, mm -hmm. Uh, Susan Wolf was the director Susan at Wolf, the time. Right. She had done two shows. And right? then Chris Donovan. Chris Donovan it. took over after Chris Wolf. Uh, before Chris Wolf was uh, Susan Wolf. Susan Wolf uh, was uh, oh gee, what's her name now? Oh, she had a nice kid. She was a real good kid. She yeah. did about seven or eight shows. Uh, she ended up having a baby and left and and went on. I see her every now and then. Uh, she's not active in access television anymore, but uh, it'll, it'll, and, and after me, there'll be someone else that comes in here at some of all access and directs it because yeah, yeah, everyone they're all jealous of me over here <laughs> because yeah. uh, I am the director of the, the West, West End, End Video Newsletter, one of the longest running shows. On, you know when I started and there, on Access TV, right? When I started, there, there, there were only two access shows. There was uh, not shows. There were only two access stations. I believe it was Wakefield. And uh, some of them. Right. They Boston were, came online afterwards. Right. Cambridge came online. Then it seemed like the whole place exploded. Everybody right. was Then online. Access went to yeah. uh, Medford, Walden. Right. right. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of towns picked it up. Came, you, it was in some of them before Cambridge had it. Which on is, here they had, uh, they had uh, an aerobic show, I remember. There was the Bob Colt show, which is still on. Right. Uh, Dead Air Live, which is still on. Live, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, an aerobic show, I forgot, Shaping Up or something, uh, uh, an elderly show about, uh, you know, elderly issues, I forgot who, what, and how, it's been so long. It's you, you haven't mentioned Melissa Hurley yet. Melissa, who's she? <laughs> Melissa Hurley's right. the host of my show. Joe. That's right. Joe does, Joe is, Joe Joe is an I access produce. director. Joe is an ass, access director that does and not just, do, yeah, and a producer, and he just does not do my show. He does a whole host of them. And he does Melissa Hurley's show uh, called Middlesex Update. And he d it does a very good job there. Matter of fact, I was at the state convention. I was a delegate to the state convention. And Melissa was up there. And we were all sitting together in the Middlesex, the second Middlesex. And uh, I was talking to her and her father, she's Dan. She's a delegate, yeah. Who are, who are good people. And she's running for uh, a probate, right? Uh, Middlesex, Middlesex County Re Register of Probate. probate yeah. yeah, Melissa's good people. I mean, 
She does a great job for me on my show. And she also, uh, she works with uh, Ed Flynn, doesn't she, I believe, on the state? Oh, she knows him. Uh, she knows everybody. Yeah, because I, I remember when Ed was, uh, Ed was getting his master's. He called me up recently, about six months ago. He was getting his master's uh, in, uh, I forgot exactly, we, I think it was communications, and he decided to do it about the West End, his, uh, his thesis about the West End. And, uh, Melissa knew about it, and I thought they, they either they know each other somehow or, uh, uh, on a different level than you know. She knows everybody. Access television. Joe, what have you learned about the West End these last 14 years? Not being a West End. Well, I started uh, watching the West End video newsletter yeah. uh, when I became a member of Somerville Access Television yeah. uh, back in '91. Right. And you're asking me, what have I learned about yeah. the West End in the past I nine mean, years? You've gone, you've gone through so much. Jim, right I've learned to love the <laughs> West End. I've learned to love it. Yeah. It's uh, uh, every month you do the show, once right. a month, like clockwork, and, right. and you have uh, uh, so many people that you grew up with back right. on, and uh, you guys reminisce about the old days. And uh, That's right. they must have been really good old days, because... Uh, Mm -hmm. What a mixture mm -hmm. of, of uh, you know, it just dawned people on from, from different ethnic backgrounds. It just dawned on me. Was, uh, do you remember that snowstorm one year? And uh, we had the, the lawyer, Tommy... Uh, Colonna? Uh, Colonna. Tom Colonna. And that was a, it was a snowstorm. I, I came in with boots on and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even take my car. I come in on the bus because it, from Davis Square because it, the snow was all over the show place. show always goes on. Yeah, and, and, and Tommy Colonna came in. And, and Tommy's a well-known lawyer here from Medford. And, and his uh, family, well-known from the North That's right, right. From the West End. Uh, wasn't... Right. Uh, wasn't it his father, his uncle, that was the I think that it was went, his went uncle. around with the, the, uh, the, the ice well, cat? Oh yeah, the ice cat. But I think blocks of ice on yeah. a hostron cat. Oh yeah, the Kelowna fuel. Those yeah. Stories. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we get them all along. We've had, we, we've had. I like hearing the stories that you guys hook and school to go to the, <laughs> the Scully Square burlesque houses. Yeah, the, but no. burlesque was different in those yeah, days. Yeah, it was just, was, you know, a lot of what was no, it was regular burlesque. Comedians. It was, it was yeah, they, it was the same burlesque that was in the old Howard, except the old Howard had closed. Uh, the Casino Burlesque Theater closed around 1960. By that time, I, I was out of high school. But yeah. we, you could take the whole day off. You could just go and uh, skip yeah. school. And they, they had two movies from 9 to 12. All you guys ate was Joe and Emo's hot dogs. Oh, I keep a lot of, a lot Joe of Joe and Emo's. Emo's and well, it was a, they originally were a nickel piece, and then they went to a dime piece for the longest oh. of time. Okay. We used to shine shoes up in Scully Square. And uh, you'd go over there, you'd make like, you know, four or five shoe shines, you know, the dime a piece of those days. And you'd go get yourself a hot dog and a hamburger and an orange soda or a Coke or whatever. And, you, you know, it was a lot of fun. I'll go after you, you made, you know, a few bucks because most people were poor in those days. I mean, we're talking about from a 90s overlay, all of us sitting around here with these, with these big oh, bellies. Yeah, 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 yeah. In those days, everybody was thin and... Yeah. And there wasn't a hell of a lot of money. And more, more of an active lifestyle. Yeah. You had to run up and down the stairs. That's right. Everyone lived, everyone lived upstairs. That's Nobody right. lived on the first floor, it seems. Everybody. I lived on the second floor. <laughs> I, I got lucky, I think. But I used to run them stairs. I used to boom, shoot it up. My mother goes, stop it! <laughs> I love hearing those West End stories. Yeah. And I like uh, hearing uh, one thing uh, that I hear you talk about a lot, and, and the people I've met, is the people from the, the old West End. They go on to successful careers and they're, they're, they're people that learned uh, a good work ethic. That's right. And uh, I never hear about people from the West End, uh, what you guys call uh, being on the dole. Uh, I, I mean, people from the West End, they lost their homes, the, the, the state of Mass, the state mm -hmm. took their homes away. Different interaction. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and, and a private developer got to make right. uh, Longfellow Place. Yeah, that was, a, know, that was the first time. If you were here, you'd be home now. Yeah, that was the first time that was allowed in, in, in Massachusetts. Now, maybe it was the first in the country. I don't know exactly. But that was the first time so that So a private happened. developer could make all that That's money right. off your and, and he did. And he did. And he, he, he took a lot of money. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, uh, in large part, he later became uh, a sort of a stigma. He became such uh, uh, a controversial figure that he could no longer... And I, uh, Rappaport. Yeah, you, you got to understand one thing about Jerome Rappaport. He was not the only guy involved in that project, but he was the lead man. So he took all the credit and took all the heat. And uh, he was called the 14th City Councilor because he had tons of money. There were, it was the only project that was put up in the 50s that time and, you know, uh, so forth and so on. It, it was amazing. But he, he was not the only. There was a Sean Pierre Bonin who worked with Robert Moses, the great Pox builder out of New York. He had the, the connections and the money 
uh, and they came up this way and did it. Matter of fact, last week we did a show on uh, development. development. Right. right. Yeah. You, and you, you, yeah. you talked to uh, Dan DeLisi and yeah. uh, 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 Rig 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 Zagmore and yeah. talked about uh, how uh, communities get together mm -hmm. and, and community activists get together and they, they seek out their the people representing the politicians right. say, listen, we don't want this. We want, you know, something that we can live with. That's right. And uh, That's we, right. we don't Entirely want it right. just to be a uh, big box company in there hiring people at mm -hmm. uh, five fifty an hour. And well, see, so you have to fight for your, for your for your neighborhood because if you don't fight for your neighborhood, strange things happen. Uh, the West End, there was just too much money. There was in, in those days, 1958, people were working for twenty-five dollars a week. And there was $11 million for slum removal. Now, they tried it down the south end of Boston, but uh, nobody wanted to build down there. Uh, it's, it's where the, uh, part of the New York streets where the Herald Traveler, the Herald uh, is today. Uh, the only ones that would move in there were, was the Boston Herald Traveler, which was the Yankee paper at that time. So they went looking for a slum in a good location, and they found one. <laughs> it may not have been a slum, but uh, they, they took it. What's interesting uh, that I see is it could have, but it didn't happen to uh, buildings are probably this built at the same time mm. uh, the, the the buildings on on Beacon Hill weren't right. any weren't any uh, no, newer than yours same and housing in, in the north end same housing but uh, it didn't happen to the north end and, and uh, those families could could stay where they were and, and Beacon Hill it didn't have but the west end they just took it and they right. said it they said oh these buildings are ready to be torn down well well the slums you know, what, what they said is the north slope of Beacon Hill, which is from Myrtle Street down to Cambridge Street, then from Cambridge Street down to the north end was the west end, and then from uh, Washington Street over was is the north end. Now, if you took it, it's the same housing that ran all the way down, it, from the hill all the way down there. But they went and took out the middle chunk and said, this is, this is slum housing. Of course, it was, happened to be the best location of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's just that worked out that way. And we've had plenty of people. We've, we've had, uh, well, we've never had Herbert Gans on here who wrote the book Over Villages, but we've had, right. he's, he's uh, done. Oh, we, I've seen him on tape. Right, we've, we've brought in the tapes where right. he, he came over, he gave a, uh, a talk at the, when we had the, uh, the award-winning uh, exhi uh, exhibit at the uh, Bostonian. Uh, he came in, the Bostonian uh, Society, and they had the, at the old state house. He came in and he gave a talk and he says, I become a heretic. He said, I, I believed in the project. When I got there, I believed in the project. He says, 10 months later, I was up City Hall saying, I become a heretic. I said, you can't do this. <laughs> you know, so he's, he, well, one thing that you've mentioned and I'm yeah. sure is true, uh, uh, people around the country and in, in urban sure. areas around the country and, and, and communities around the country have learned from this. I mean, That's it's right. on record what happened to the West Enders oh, and exactly. how they, their parents were kicked out. That's and, right. and they were kicked out. We're, we're building expensive housing here that you're not going to be able to afford. That's right. We're building Longfellow Place. That's right. And you can't afford it. So scram. Right. And the West Enders uh, and didn't, didn't know their rights, from what I hear. And, and Tom time, Colonna no. mentioned that. Yeah, no, he's an most attorney now. So he's an attorney and, now. And most of and, uh, most of us didn't. People didn't know to get, a, right. get lawyers and, and, and that they, they should well, fight. The, and, and all the West Enders <laughs> ended up living in Somerville. That's right. Some Medford. Stone East Boston, and, yeah. Uh, uh, East Boston, was, was Wallen, yeah. all the West Enders moved out. Yeah, they pretty much ringed the city because there was no housing in the city. There was no uh, good, affordable housing in the city of Boston. They wanted us to go. They tore the West End down and wanted most of us to go into projects. They said that was their their idea of relocating us. According to federal law, they had to relocate us. But they never they did they, they re relocated less than ten percent of us. And their idea of reloco relocation was to put you into a project. Yeah. Okay. West Enders weren't project people, so we right. went outside the city. And in effect, they forced us out of the city into, into affordable housing in the, in, in the area surrounding uh, Boston, which was unfortunate. But you know, some. But you guys have, uh, are all very proud. Well, to we're a neighborhood. Come from the West End. We're a neighborhood. There's two times. I, I see. I see people all yeah. over the place with a. I'm a West Ender on, yeah. on the bumper sticker, and, and they haven't been there in 40 years. There's this organization called LISC. They gave fifty thousand dollars to our partners, who were in, in, in the long run ended up uh, screwing the office. <laughs> uh, and, and this guy didn't want to give them the money, give our partners the money, and, and he went up there and he says, "Well, you know, the West End's gone. Charles River Park's there." I said, "That you know, buildings don't make a neighborhood." People make neighborhoods. We ain't got the buildings anymore, but we're still a neighborhood. 
And even Peter Galzinus, who wrote that fine article, right, I don't know right. if, you, if you read it. I did read oh, it last week, and, week. Yeah. He wrote there, and he said, well, West End is getting a raw deal. And oh. He's a great guy. He's, we've had him on the show, too. We've yeah. had him, Al Lupo. We've had a whole host of uh, reporters, too. Uh, you know, he called us the neighborhood of the mind. <laughs> he's on the show. Somewhere back in, in our archives, we can dig it out. And, and he called us, you know, you guys are the neighborhood of the mind. <laughs> and in my mind, somehow I remember being there, but I, I was two years old. And I, but I... But I it, it, was, it, was just a, it was just a funny it, place. I remember reading a Boston magazine. When I first started this, some guy wrote, he was not a West Ender, but he wrote an article for Boston magazine. And in it, what he said was, I remember those streets. I used to go to school with somebody who was a West Ender, and I used to go down those streets and run through those little alleys and everything. And he says, what fun it was. And he says, and, and, you know, he says, and, and the long and the short of it, you know, those, those uh, European-style city and everything. Uh, it, it all disappeared because of somebody's uh, idea that you know they, they would make some money for uh, affordable, not affordable housing for luxurious, luxury apartments. And, yeah, right. So it, 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 you know, it's been written about. Everybody that writes about it, you know, and does research on it. Okay, there are people that say, "Well, it was, no, no, no. once they get into it and do research on it, they go, oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that happened.'" <laughs> That they did what? <laughs> to a wonderful yeah. community yeah, yeah. of people. I mean, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys aren't making it up. Yeah. I mean, uh, oh, uh, we couldn't make it up. I mean, I like to hear about you guys swimming in the Charles River and. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it was people, clean. Of course, it, it was clean a long time ago, and, and uh, a lot of people don't realize that the Charles River, right on the banks, before Starro Drive came in, you know, the way Starro Drive comes in, it cuts around like that, goes yeah. under the bridge. Well, Charles Street used to be uh, a four four-lane street with a grass median running down the middle really? of it. Really? Yeah. And you crossed that and you went into the park. Now, the park was not built by Olmsted, but Olmsted had designed it way back. Right. And then somewhere down the line, somebody else had put it together and put it in with these rolling hills. And they had the little beach right by the, right by the uh, Longfellow Bridge. And we used to go in there swimming. And uh, at night, you'd go down there and it was nice. Uh, they had all these bushes. It was, and the oak tree, okay? If you're from the West End, you know the oak tree because you probably climbed it at least once. The, when you first came in the front end of the park where the pool is today, mm -hmm. where the pool is today, if you went in there, you would see this big oak tree that was, the branches started coming off low, maybe about this high. And it was just so easy to climb that everybody in the West End probably climbed it at least once because you went down into the park all the time. Mm -hmm. The park was a great place to play and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it was, I call it the, the clasp on Olmsted's emerald necklace because he designed it and, and he put it there right. and, and, and it was one of the first places they ran highways through. It was, a, it was sort of a shame. Right. But anyways, well, getting, I, I wanna, getting back to the show itself. Yeah, the West End, the West yeah. End video newsletter. Uh, and, and you asked me where I learned about it. I've learned to love the West End. Mm -hmm. But uh, you've had guests on that have written books. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Dave yeah. Crew was on. Dave Crew was on he twice. He started the sixth show and he was on just recently. He reissued the book and came back. He said, Jim, can I be an actor? Books about show? it. Sure. sure. Yeah. And uh, uh, Bill Maccioni. Bill Maccioni wrote a book, uh, The Italians of Boston. Right. He was a guest. Right. And uh, you've had uh, Sonny Lapresti, of course. You mentioned oh, him. Oh, Sonny, the old time. Uh, People yeah. don't realize his Ray, father. Ray his Flynn father is a big Ross. supporter of the West Oh, Ray, Yeah, Ray I was Flynn. on the, uh, two weeks ago on a People's Friday. People's mayor. Yeah, the Friday before Memorial Day, I went on his show. and we, uh, he, he, was, uh, he subbed for Upton Bell. And he called me up. He says, Jim, you want to be on the show from 6 to 7? Uh, I want to talk about the West End. I said, okay. I ran down there. But, you know, uh, Memorial Day, there was nobody around. <laughs> I tried to get, you know... Uh, no, uh, nobody from the West End called in, and that's unusual because usually whenever I go on a talk show, one of those radio talk shows, the lines light up, and uh, everybody was just basically out of town. But Ray's a great guy, right. and, and, and he did a lot for us, and oh, yeah, I can't say too much about Ray. Yeah, yeah, uh, re really good guy, neighborhood mayor. Uh, the, the mayor now, uh, they call him neighborhood mayor, but Flynn was really the neighborhood mayor. Can't be mayor. bought. Yeah, oh. That's why they went after him. They, they went after him. They called him a drunk because they couldn't get him as a. <laughs> oh, they couldn't. Yeah. yeah no, but no. Everybody that knew him knew knew that he would never. You know, money. He didn't was run expensive campaigns. Yeah. He, he did it on foot. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't money. There was. We had all those politicians that year. Remember, we had we have. Jay, well, John O'Connor ran against Capuano. We had Ray oh, Flynn. Oh, Ray Flynn ran yeah. for uh, the congressional seat that Joe mm -hmm. Kennedy gave up. The one yeah. that uh, Michael Capuano now represents yeah. the district. And uh, we, I, I like Mike. Yeah. He's a great guy. 
We've had a whole host of people coming on the show. Right. I mean, other times. You've had Tom Birmingham on. Tom uh, Birmingham, yeah. Uh, Tom he, Birmingham. Is, was it his mother that was born? No, no. Tom, Tom Birmingham's wife, Botman. His wife. Is, uh, uh, her name, her maiden name was Botman, and and the mother is uh, uh, is from the West End. Okay. She, uh, he, he, we had him on the show, and he said, uh, the, he says, uh, I want to tell you guys that uh, I held this back from you, but my mother, mother-in-law, comes from the West End. <laughs> I, 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 ran up to him. I, I ran up to him in, uh, in the convention up in Lowell, and uh, uh, we were talking. Just recently, we uh, became treasurer of the Ward 6 Democratic Committee, <laughs> uh, but I was a delegate. Jim, to the Jim's a politician now. Yeah, yeah. Officially? Yeah, I, I can't get anything. They, they forced me out of Boston. They, they won't even talk to me in Boston anymore. <laughs> but in some of them, I'm doing all right, I guess. You know, it's a whole different story. <laughs> uh, we've, we've had some uh, shows here. Uh, 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 you've you've given me tapes of things uh, oh, yeah? that we've yeah. edited in. You were at a, uh, you you speak at a conference at MIT every year. Uh, no, no, I give a class every year. Every year class. there's a class. Uh, Dennis Frenchman, there's a class on urban plant to master students in urban planning. And every year, uh, one part of that is the West End. Part of it's like you know they, they take like uh, different places and, that uh, have um, impacted planning. And the West End is you know considered you know uh, one of those that was. Uh, it was probably the definitive project in the 50s that changed the way development was looked at because there were so many horror stories coming out of they it. They said, this is what you can't do. Yeah, it became an example of how not to conduct a renewal. Right. And, and what really, see, I, I coined that phrase in my early newsletters. Of, you know, I said, West there was a development. Uh, the government uses on how not to conduct a urban how, renewal. How not. You can't, don't just, you just I go see can't Tom pick O'Brien. out thousands of people. I see Tom O'Brien up at the... Tell him to go to some of them. Uh, he was oh. talking about, before he got kicked out of the BRA, he was down at, they had this, the Globe had this conference at uh, South Boston, and he stood up and he said, and we will never have another West End. That was a prime example of how not to conduct urban renewal. <laughs> I said, oh, <laughs> my message is getting through. You know, that's the kind of thing... Uh, that they were saying uh, something uh, when I videotaped it, it was yeah. about four years ago. Uh, he had the groundbreaking oh, for the that ground West End yeah. place. Yeah, West End place. Everybody yeah, loved uh, me. Yeah, yeah. Except the lights were. You went. had, I mean, uh, 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 Ted Kennedy was there, of course, right. and, and Governor Weld, Governor Weld was there, of course. Of course, when I got up, yeah, I gotta say this about and Weld. And they all talked. <laughs> After I got done, he said, "Good job, Jim." <laughs> Shook my head. <laughs> I, I give an analogy. And what happened? They made yeah. they made expensive housing yeah. that. Well, no, and, and the affordable housing they did put in, they they wouldn't let us in. They more or less kicked us out of it. <laughs> they, they, you know, they it say it couldn't happen again, but it, well, they, it happened right. again. And they used they used yeah. the na they used the uh, the, yeah. uh, the West End uh, Housing Corporation as yeah. though uh, you know, yeah, to get it, their own loans, yeah, they, to get their own they way trot, through, they get their their own out. permits. They yeah. brought you guys out. And they said, We're yeah. doing it for them, which they yeah, it's, weren't. It's, it's it's this is to redress the sins of the West End. Yeah, I can't bring believe the back. speeches <laughs> they gave at the groundbreaking for that place. And I taped yeah. it all. That's right, Joe. And. Uh, and oh, they fed all the old West Enders yeah, that were invited yeah. there. What a what, what food! But they when they have. put I the mean, building together, you remember what we were doing when they put the building together and they had the uh, the grand opening? Where were we, Joe? You taped that too. Grand opening. Oh, after that, you were picketing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I know. Right? Yeah. I know, yeah. I know. It's 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 awful. Uh, but uh, getting back to this other thing, uh, I've. Been, I, I, I accrued on this, and I was a cameraman mm -hmm. on this show for uh, oh, a yeah. few years. Yeah. Uh, again, I've been, been here at SCAT for nine years as mm -hmm. a member, uh, and I helped other people that were directing the show, and I've been directing it right. for the last four years. Uh, but one theme, and I, I'll say it again, uh, the people that uh, left the West End, they went on, and they, they might have moved to Medford or Somerville or Marlin or right. Stoneham or wherever, but they all, they're just successful people in life. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they, they went on to be uh, lawyers and, and their, their children uh, go right. on. And, and uh, they, uh, uh, the people I've met, uh, uh, we've got uh, uh, Frank Crivatera. Frank Crivatera, very Getting successful. to know Frank, <laughs> very a wonderful, wonderful man, generous to the community, mm -hmm. uh, supports so much in the community, and mm -hmm. he gives back. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and 
the West Enders could be bitter, but they, they're not bitter, you know. Yeah. They're mad, but, <laughs> but they're not bitter. Uh, yeah. they, they still love the, the, the community of the West End, which is right. in the mind. Yeah. Uh, but uh, exactly. if they're, whether they live in Somerville, like uh, uh, Frank Privetera does, mm -hmm. or in Medford, like Frank Levine, meeting Frank Levine. Uh, yeah. has been a, a, a positive thing in my well, life. Frank Levine, what a wonderful man. Yeah, well, Frank Levine was on the, we may as well tell the story a little bit. Uh, Frank Levine was on the uh, Exodus boats. He was a crewman of the Exodus boats that went, uh, Exodus 47, that went to Israel with the uh, refugees from the camps. And uh, the British, the British, uh, almost sunk them, almost sunk them, I don't remember. Right, the, the British were was trying to stop the ship mm. from going to uh, Israel. Right. Because uh, all, all the people, the uh, uh, Jewish people that were freed from concentration camps and, mm -hmm. and they wanted to, you know, all over Europe, the Jews being persecuted. That's I right. learned so much listening to, mm -hmm. to guests on this show. And you know and, how and, Frank, and Frank, Frank says, oh, I can sail. They got an old boat yeah, was, out of, out of uh, Delaware. They said, we're going to take this boat to France, pick up a bunch of and, and refugees and bring them to Israel. They said, well, you, the British won't let you do that. <laughs> he says, he said, well, I, I can sail. I've sailed before. He sailed on the Charles. He said he, he went to sail. a dance. He went to a dance and he met this girl and she says, uh, uh, can you sail? He says, oh, sure, I can sail. Uh, so then he went overseas. I think he was in Guam. He was wherever he was. And when he came back, he gets a phone call. Would you like to take this ship to Israel? <laughs> and Frank, being the kind of guy he is, he said, sure. <laughs> and hearing that story, yeah. and, and uh, I, I had seen the movie. I think yeah. it must have been in 1960. I was a little kid. Yeah. And I saw the movie Exodus. I think uh, yeah. who was in it? Uh, uh, yeah, what's uh, his name? Uh, Paul Newman. Paul Newman and uh, the kid that died there. Uh, uh, Sal. Sal Minio. Sal Minio. Mm -hmm. Exodus. Yeah. And that just made an impression on me. I mean, I was a little, real little kid. And, yeah. and it's like, and then to meet Frank Levine, he, he was on the boat. And, and the British followed them yeah. from France. And, and they had a plan. They were going to run it aground. They were going to yeah. make like they were going to one part of Israel and then run it aground somewhere else. And the British boarded them. Mm -hmm. And these are refugees that were persecuted all during World War II. They wanted to go to the, the, the promised land. And Frank, every year, goes to Israel. He, he speaks to the kibbutz. He lives in a kibbutz. He's a Ibrut. hero and in he, Israel. And, and he speaks to them. He tells the kids what it was all about in, in those days and everything. Uh, he's a good man. Good and man. people have to, oh, and man. to learn how people really... Kind of West End. People, <laughs> people have to fight yeah. for, for what, what they believe, uh, what right. they believe in. You, yeah. you, you do. I think, well, I, I don't think you see that kind of fight anymore because I think everybody's belly's full. And, uh, but meeting, meeting the former West Enders and seeing some of the reunions that you guys have had and you guys oh, yeah. get back together and uh, we're showing you some footage right now as we speak of uh, oh, oh, really? West Enders getting together. Uh, you, you've seen a lot of footage on uh, this tape uh, I, I'll from, tell you from something. past shows and past a year, a year ago we ran a show on a, an old reunion, right? And I never realized that we had gotten, there. so many people called and said, you know, I saw so-and-so, do you know where he is today? And there were so many people just, just, they said, you know, I seen that show, I was watching it, uh, I got more kickback and feedback. Did you have the Wonderland Ballroom? Yeah, Wonderland Ballroom. Uh, one thing I want to mention, uh, uh, I, I, I've been directing this show for right. the past four years, uh, but since I'm a guest tonight, talking <laughs> about my experience uh, yeah. uh, doing the show, directing right? the show yeah. and, and working on this show and, and meeting Jim and all the West Enders, we have Tedros. <laughs> and you're, you're, we have Tedros. Uh, That's right. Who's he's been, been here. Who's been the assistant director the past uh, uh, few quite months? Quite a while, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. he's been helping helping us out a lot, yeah. helping me out a lot. But he's directing this one, yeah. and uh, good we have. I mean, a lot of people. And, and, and in public access TV, I people help people when people right. learn, and, and uh, I've really, I've really enjoyed my membership here, and I pay my dues. And uh, looks like uh, he's giving us a time out, Jim. Well, great being on. Well, as, a, as you can see from the reunions and the people that are on the reunion, uh, uh, everybody's having a good time here. So thank you, Joe. Uh, I'll see you next month again, naturally. It's and been, a, see this. been a pleasure. And uh, see you at the next West End Video Newsletter.